when was the last time you did something that would take you closer to a life that you love? Get answers to this and many other life-changing questions on Grow Your Soul Radio. Ignite your inner magic and learn the art of life mastery with Jane Matanga. Jane will unlock and help you reclaim the magic in your life. Take an inspiring journey with Jane as you receive guidance toward the path of your greatest dreams and desires as she helps you reach success as you make powerful changes that will get you back on track and keep you there. Discover insightful tools, world wisdoms, and exercises in this hit call-in show. Transform and awaken your inner light right now on Grow Your Soul Radio. Hey, everybody, I'm Dr. Pat, and I am here with the host of Grow Your Soul Radio, Jane Matangan. Night. Ignite your inner magic today. And by the way, throughout the show, uh, if you are wanting to give us a shout or call in, 1-800-930-2819, please write that down. Those of you that are watching on Facebook Live, you can go ahead and do that, or you can comment on Facebook as well. Not exactly uh, uh, sure of all the details there, but we monitor it. We get your questions on air. And we make sure we get you answers. You know, Jane is somebody that works with people all over the world. And I want to make sure all of you know that. And what that means is that whether you're working with her on how to become more abundant in life or how to work with the cards that she works with, whether you're looking at angel cards, you're looking at what the energies are you want to bring into your life, either more or less of them then what you know is that Jane has studied Eastern and Western healing and brings it all together in every session that she does with all of you. So I want to make sure for those of you that are listening, um, you're probably going to hear some things and think about how can I have this thing, this life mastery that Jane brings forward. And the way to do that is for sure to go to her website, And that is enlightened-path.com, enlightened-path.com. Today's show is all about love. Today's show is I am love. Jane, great, great show, great topic. And boy, do we need this now. All you need is love, right? Absolutely. That's all there is. It's, It's what makes everything beautiful in your life everything. Yeah. It, so let's so let's talk about love. Sometimes we think love is not real, but that's actually the opposite of what it is, isn't it? It is. I, love is who we are. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. we're really led to believe that that we're everything that our five senses tells us that we are, but we are so much more than that. I mean, there's so much wisdom inside of our soul. And it's where our wisdom lies and it's where our true self is. And, you know, it's it's wherever, whatever we are seeking is, is seeking us. And it's our true nature and love is our true nature. That's our perfection. Mm. Um, it's the most important aspect of who we are. And when we connect to that, it's such a powerful thing. I think people forget just how powerful and how gifted they are in this life. Um, the tools that we have just innately to light up the world with our own gifts, whether it's music or creativity or, um, you know, if you paint beautiful works of art, if you write beautiful books, if you teach and you have a gift for speaking to people, you know, these are all your passions and that comes from your soul and that comes from your innate being, which is love. You know, and that's who we all are. That's our impersonal, our impersonal self. It's it's not our sense. It's it's who we are when our physical body is is no longer and is eternal. It's 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 everything. You know, it's our infinite wisdom. Always in in every lifetime, in every rebirth, in every. Mm-hmm. It's the all healing, all supplying. Mm-hmm. It's it's everywhere, and it's in us, and it's in yeah. everyone. Yeah, I've I've heard you talk about this as being the real you, 
you know, about this being the real you in the field of consciousness. And I, and I think that, you know, part of, of our day-to-day lives is that we forget. You know, we forget that when we come into this world, there's a real us. And that part of who we are is that thing of love, is that thing of kindness, you know, uh, is that thing that doesn't know the, the many faces of fear. And so, you know, what is it that we should know about our soul, about how to let it guide us and, and, and the impersonal nature of it? I'm going to quote Rebecca Campbell, who wrote the book, uh, Light is the New Black, only because she says it so beautifully, and uh, Mm -hmm. there's no way I can say it better than she does. But uh, the quote would be, there's a field of consciousness where all wisdom resides, a field where all of the questions that you could possibly phantom live, a field where the past, the present, the future exists simultaneously where the wisdom of the heavens and the earth calls you by name, where what you are seeking is also seeking you, a field where all soul contracts, history, guidance, whisper eternal, a field where the book of your soul is open for you to connect through. And Rebecca Campbell wrote those worlds about our unique nature, and it's how we serve. So whenever a passion lights us up, you know, it's who we are, you know, it's, it's like your personal, you know, it's not your resume. It's, it's, it's everything that exists outside of all your senses, outside of what you can see, feel, touch Mm -hmm. and hear. It's, it's your innate goodness. Mm. And it's, it's, it's your creative gift that you were brought here to this world to do the work you were meant to do. Like you, Pat, you are doing, this beautiful work on transformation talk radio Mm -hmm. and uh, it's so needed today all the positivity and just goodness that comes out of your show and all the beautiful colleagues who are so gifted and that's their soul and their gift and their higher wisdom that's speaking and and doing all this beautiful loving work in the world which is so needed and that's who we are you know Mm -hmm. that's our personal self that remains when the body does not that's what gets reborn lifetime after lifetime you know it's really interesting because when we're not in that place that you're talking about when we're not in that connection with that which too seeks us um one of the things that I've noticed about myself Jane and you work with people all over the world so you know and you see it in others is life gets really uncomfortable. You know, I, I, I must say that there have been parts in time in my life, disturbing is an understatement mm-hmm. for what happens when there is this thing which I know that I want to bring forward in my life, but all of the stuff gets in the way from the natural happenings. And one of those things we've talked about is fear. I think fear is is one of those fear and worry those two together you put those two together and it's hard for the goodness of the universe to get to us isn't it it is it blocks us off and fear blocks our original nature and it veils you know everything that we are and that's why we need to just be pretty mindful of of who and what our unique presence is and how we serve just by being us just our special gifts that we came here to uh, share with the world so and Mm -hmm. to just connect with that soul and that essence of who we are and the stuff that isn't our resume or our physical nature and that intelligence that's the gift that's always with us you know that we can connect to and that's in each and every single one of us and that we need to just remind ourselves to listen to Mm -hmm. and to stay connected to because once we do that it's you know, we are just so much more powerful than we are ever led to believe or educated to believe. We can do everything. You know, it's an invisible intelligence. It's that thing that is out there. We know it's out there. It's trying to get our attention. And yet, even with all of that, you know, 
there's something for us to learn about the impersonal nature of who we are, that energy and life force. So, you, you know, how do we learn to connect with this? Because I'll tell you, my life is so much better, so much better. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big thing, Jane. I mean, honestly, I'm playing in a table tennis tournament this coming weekend. And I, it's down in Tacoma. And Tacoma's like hours away from me. Like, you know, like where you are. That would be like going from like where you are to New York. Something like that, right? right. Um, and so, honestly, all of this invisible intelligence says, get a room, Pat. Just get a hotel and go to, oh my gosh, I like agonized over that last night. And I thought to myself, what is really going on here? It's such a, it sounds like such a simple thing. What is really going on? Isn't it all of the layers, all of the self-talk, all of the, wait a minute, where do you think you have time to even get, be away for three days, right? Isn't it all of that that gets in the way of our impersonal life best? Absolutely. Absolutely. We forget that we're meant to, to have fun. You know, we're so busy doing and so busy being, uh, you know, what we think we should be, you know, a bit people pleasing and just, you know, working and providing and we forget to have fun and to be the and to be joyful and to do things that make us happy because, you know, life sometimes does get in the way and we mm -hmm. forget, you know, we mm -hmm. forget to get back a hold of what truly matters and that's mm -hmm. where we're the happiest is when we're back in our original nature when we are you know when when we are we're happiest when we're in you know when we're not stressed when we're not in yeah. fear, and that's our original nature yeah yeah and you know we're going to take a short break when we come back we're going to talk about this in relationship to the soul because we talk a lot about the soul and yet the question really is well you know, if we have this high regard to the soul and we look at the soul and the soul's purpose and, you know, the soul is bringing us this endless, infinite number of gifts and intuition and invisible intelligence. Why is it we want to put other stuff in the pot that gets in the way? Let's come back. And when we talk, when we come back, we're going to talk about what does it mean to really have the ego and the soul be friends. Stay tuned, everyone. Jade Matang is in the house. We'll be right back. Ah, uh, Benny, who did that cover? Who's doing uh, that? Uh, Stevie, I, if, I, I honestly don't know if I can even pronounce a name. It's uh, Alessandro, right. Alessandro, and then it's T-A-C-C-I-N-I. -C -C it's Italian, so it's, you could probably get that. Tanachi. Oh, okay. Tanachi. Uh, okay. There we go. It's, yep, it's either that or one of my Brazilian relatives. One or Tassini. It could be Tassini because, like, we're silly, <laughs> right? That's one exactly. That's right, Betty. Good one. Uh, Jane Matang is in the house. And like I said, this is your show, folks. 1-800-930-2819. Jane, before we talk about the soul, Benny has got one of our fabulous, fabulous listeners on the line for us. Yes, we do. We have Liz calling in from Florida. Hello, Liz. Welcome to the show. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hi. Hi. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. You betcha. We're, we're in Florida. Well, I'm on the east coast of Florida between, um, let's say, West Palm Beach and uh, Daytona Beach. Awesome. Yeah, my folks moved down there to Florida. I was the only one that didn't go. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah, keep sending us some sunshine here on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Jane's here. How can, how can we help you, Liz? Well, I was, um, I, I was listening, and I was intrigued by the statement that your guest made about love. And I'm on the journey, as all of us in humanity, tracking that love energy. And I believe your guest said that we are love. We are love. And I so believe in that. Mm -hmm. However, 
I'm struggling on this journey because I know we are, all of us and every creature in humanity, I think, has the ability of love, even with our pets and animals. They love us. You know, Mm -hmm. we have an affection for them. But I am just struggling, and maybe you all can help me with, why is this love so hard since that's what we are? I believe we all know that is our essence of love here Mm -hmm. on this journey. But it seems to be a place of choice. We choose who we want to love, how we want to love, and if we're going to show that love throughout humanity. And and when your guest said that we are love, I keep struggling with, yes, if we are love, then why is it so hard to demonstrate that daily in our lives toward everyone? That's a great question. I believe me, I'm right on top of that. And I and I think, Jane, that's what I was saying before the break. And boy, Liz, you put this so perfectly. Why if we are love, why do we show up a lot of the time, sometimes not love? And Jane, I know you got the answer to that. Our ego mm-hmm. gets in the way, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and that's when we are not our true self, you know, because we start thinking about our, all of our socialization and, and we start um, ju- being judgmental, you know, and that's not our true nature, being judgmental. Um, because when you judge someone else, you're really judging yourself, you know, and, unless you've walked in somebody else's shoes exactly the way they have, you really can't judge someone. You really don't know what they are experiencing in the way that they do. And we forget that. And it's just because of, you know, our society and the way we're taught and and then we forget. And Mm. so it's so important to just remember that this this gift that we have, you know, in our soul and who our essence and our light, it's our light, you know, it's, it's that divine life force that's in us. That's, you know, um, we all think that's outside of us, that it's something outside of us that's doing something to us, but it isn't, it's inside, you know, it's Mm -hmm. us and we can, we control that, you know, and uh, it's something that when we can remember to get back in touch with it, I mean, it can really change our lives. So, and it's, it's b- being on the human plane. I and mean, we're all going to have these moments, you know, even if we're enlightened or more enlightened, you know, the, the whole life, you know, our life is a journey. I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to learn in human form. And so, you know, we're going to have those moments and those moments teach us, you know, and that's how we learn. That's mm-hmm. how we learn to step up, to step out, to not to be afraid, to not be judgmental. Uh, and that's really what it is. It's our ego and it's our training. And it's when we forget who we are that that yeah. happens. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering with that, and that's a good um, a response to that, because when I know I'm struggling with, I hear, I hear a lot. Uh, James, that people say we are love. I read it biblically, you know, that mm-hmm. love is what we are. And it, it just bewithers me to say, well, I heard you say that we're more, I think what I was getting from that, we're more ego than love because ego takes over love. Love is only exhibited as we choose to allow it to be. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, it's like, I guess when I heard you say that, it was like, oh, wow, I I believe that, but she must believe that as well. And why can't we all believe that and be in that wonderful place and that positive energy that we want to give out um, the love part of us that that would make us whom we are in this human Mm -hmm. sense that we carry around. But I think, too, when you just said that ego... um, I think ego weighs more than the love factor, you know, because uh, it just, it's a choice. Yeah. We know we are love. We have love. We can show love, but we choose to walk in that other side of uh, the enlightenment of saying we are this, this, or this with Mm -hmm. our ego. I I don't, I I think we get caught in it, up in it. Yeah. I I don't. And I think we always know that that's not who we are. And, and it's that, you know, when you pay attention to your senses and your your body tells you and your body gives you messages and, you, you know, like when you know when somebody's not telling you the truth, 
That's your mm-hmm. internal light. You know, you know when somebody's not telling, and you know when you're not being your authentic self. Mm-hmm. And so it's being mindful and and being able to flick your ego off your shoulder when you know it's coming in. You know, it's being present. You know, it's really being present. You know, and mm-hmm. knowing when those thoughts are coming into your head, it's it's being mindful of that, hitting the pause button, and, and saying to yourself. Is this really what what I want to be thinking and mm. doing? Is that my authentic self? Is that what I what I want to say? What I want to be? What I want to do? And and so it's when you're mindful of that, you can make the you can hit the correct button mm-hmm. and do a redo. Yeah, hey, you know, Liz, I used to think that the opposite of love was hate. And I, I grew up never hating anybody. I mean, I didn't, I don't even understand what hate is. You know, you know, most of the people in my life say that's because Pat, your attention span is so short that you can't remember what you are angry at somebody about. Um, I just don't think it's my nature, but what I discovered is that the opposite of love for me is fear. See any, Uh I can point to every time in my life when I am either withholding love and by the way, for myself, starting with myself, it's any time that I've been in this place where Jane, you were talking about it before, where I forget about the divine intelligence that's out there for me, right? That's there with possibilities. That's there with answers, right? Whenever I have not been able to tap into that, it hasn't been because I'm mad, It's mad has come from being afraid in my life, right? So if I'm not in love, I am in, I I am in one of the 50 shades of fear. See, there are 50 shades of fear in my life. You know what I'm saying? See, everybody thinks that fear is like, oh my God, you know, there's going to be a tornado. I'm afraid. No, fear comes in sometimes in the more gentle ways the more seductive ways you know uh the the way that the rolling stones talk about it when they talk about sympathy for the devil that song it's a little bit different you know it's this this little bit of oh maybe i'm not going to wear that tight shirt today see like that that little thing mm-hmm. like why are you not going to wear that shirt today? You love that shirt. Why? Because you think you ate too many potato chips last night. That's why you're not going to wear the shirt today. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, Liz? It's like, I guarantee yeah. you that if you look, what Jane was talking about before, the soul knows love. It's not going to bring us fear. If I'm not in a place of love, and by the way, Jane, I think there are like 50 shades of love too, but I just made that up. Um, if I'm not in some of that, then I'm afraid. And I, I, I think Jane, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that probably maybe for Liz is that if, if she can find that place, that's a little bit scary and address it. I know that's the work you do, Jane, you help people get rid of that scary place. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you, when you begin to have an understanding and a realization of who you really are, and again, it's, it's really being mindful mm. of when these these thoughts yeah. come up and yeah. just getting back into alignment. And we all do it and it's okay to get out of alignment. We all have that those human moments. You know, none of us, I mean, we wouldn't be down here reincarnating if we had learned everything we needed to know. So mm. this is what we're here for. Okay. So we just need to listen and learn and, and and make that correction and and it's so true what Pat was saying it's so true and I really think that that's the opposite of love is fear yeah that is absolutely the truth yeah I mean you know you can read about it whether you're let's say that you know it doesn't matter what spiritual philosophy you have you could be Christian you can be Buddhist you can be Jewish it doesn't matter. You know, there are places that you can point to where people have done horrible things in the world. And what's underneath it is fear. You know, there's some level of fear. I'm afraid that if I don't do this, these groups of people are going to not like me. I'm afraid that if I do this, these groups of people. So you see, it's, it's like strange, right? 
It's yeah. not like there's yeah. a giant lion going to bite my head off. It's just like these little things that we go through life and we say, oh, I, you know what? I, I'm not going to make that hotel reservation because why? Because somewhere in my ego, I'm thinking I'm all so much about myself that Transformation Talk Radio can't go on if I decide to go <laughs> play table tennis for the weekend. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> As Linda would say to me, you know what? I don't think you're just that big, that big a deal in the world. And she's right. But, you know, part of this is give yourself a break to address the fact that you're human. You're human. Absolutely. And I think we're too tough on ourselves, too. I oh. think we punish. We're very good at punishing ourselves. And um, yeah. yeah, instead of instead of staying in our happiness and, and reminding ourselves, like, what a great job we did getting through mm -hmm. this challenge or or that stressful period or something that didn't make sense to us or some, something mm -hmm. that was unkind. I mean, if you mm -hmm. if you concentrate on that and all the things that you amazing things that we have all done in our lives, you know, we we spend too much time not being in our joy and our happiness. Mm -hmm. we, you know, it's the what ifs, the hows mm -hmm. that we spend our time with instead of, you know, the, the gratefulness and the wow, you were we don't celebrate our achievements, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's why people, you know, work with you, Jane, because first of all, it is really hard to get out of a 10 foot deep pothole if you don't know you're in it. If you don't know like you're in a pothole, you can't even. And that's why, I, you know, I work with other people. I work with coaches. And, you know, Liz, the thing I want to say to you is if this is something that shows up in a pattern in your life. This is something that you can change, right? You could change mm -hmm. it. Um, you yeah. called into the show. So first thing is you're way aware of it. So thank you for doing that. Did we answer your question? Yes, you ladies did. And I thank you so much for having me and allowing me to express my question. And I am on the journey of transformation and transcending my thoughts and on this journey of uh, enlightenment. And I just, when I tuned in and saw this transformational <laughs> radio, it was very interesting for me. And I just was listening and everything that you all are addressing today is uh, really for me today on the journey. So I thank you. And you did answer my questions and I'm still traveling enlightenment. Yeah, boy, me too. I'm on it. Let's take a short break, everybody. Let's get on that enlightenment train with us. Jane Matang is in the house. I'm Dr. Pat. We'll be right back. We're going to take a shorty. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Jane Matang is in the house. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. We're taking your calls. 1-800-930-2819. This is Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Today, we're talking about I am love. Here's what I want to invite everybody to do. Whether you believe it or not, uh, join me in a seven-day challenge. Uh, excuse me, a 70-day challenge. 70-day challenge. That 70 times a day, for 70 days, thanks to Jane, you're going to say out loud, I am love, whether you believe it or not. You ready to do it? 70 times a day for 70 days, I am love. And Jane, you know, I mean, this is just one thing, but I don't know about you. I had to figure out that I could not take this journey alone. And that's why you're doing the work that you do. How can people work with you? How can they find out more about you? And what is the best phone number for them to call? My uh, phone number is 203-631-4275. And my website is info at enlightened-path.com. Good. And, that was uh, your email. And the website is enlightened-path.com. Path awesome. mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, let's talk about this notion of I am love, perfect, whole, and complete. 
how do we become aware of this divine intelligence, this invisible, invisible energy within us, especially if we become so crusted over? I, you just, you have to be aware that this is always speaking to you when you light up with a passion, when you get a brilliant idea of something you want to do or create in your life or be, that is your divine intelligence. That is your inner knowing, your highest wisdom, your infinite consciousness, whatever we want to call it, your soul, um, your infinite mind, it's everywhere. And if you pay attention to it and you take time to listen to it, I think part of the time, you know, we're just so busy. Life is so busy. We're so plugged in to everything all the time. The world is a noisy, busy place. And we need to unplug in order to kind of get back in touch with, you know, who we are and that, mm -hmm. that, that real place within, that creative source. And um, it's the greatest part of us. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, it, innate within every single one of us. And I think once we realize that, that who we really are, um, it's very powerful. And look at, look at what people have created in the world. I mean, that is the power of our, our essence and our, our divine, infinite love and source. You know, mm -hmm. we look at what we, we create and we make in this world and what people are so capable of doing. We forget how powerful, how gifted, what we have and it's all, it's all inside, you know, it's mm -hmm. all inside of us. Uh, it's, it's all there. It's, you know, you, you, and you have to believe that it is true. I mean, even uh, the scientists have written that there is a intelligence and a universal source behind everything that aligns the planets, that opens the roses, that, so many books have been written on it. I mean, this has mm -hmm. been talked about by masters and Eastern and Western healers for centuries. And, uh, you know, our spirit and our true source and our, uh, you know, what's within. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things, too, is we not only talk about it in terms of, you know, our sciences, we know about the sciences and we know definitely about the energy of things, you know, but also in the field of psychology and spirituality, you know, there is this notion about what happens when we look within and what happens when we look out. And those are not the same uh, it necessarily. However, um, I think it has been said that if we can master the way that we look within and look within for our guidance, our intelligence and wisdom, then when we look outside, that can become a reflection of that with which, which is in. And if we don't look in and say, what's going on in there, Pat? You know, what's going on in there, Jane? You know, is there something going on in there that's open up to the divine intelligence and guidance, guidance that's trying to talk to you? Then we're not going to hear the messages. We're not going to hear what's being said to us. I'm not going to dial a wrong phone number and then don't hang up and go on the journey of my life purpose. I'm just not. I'm not going to stay quiet enough to hear that voice. Um, but this is really the key. How do we create that vision? from looking within how do we create the vision for the outside world by looking within well when you're in touch with who you really are um you are unstoppable when you have mm -hmm. passion in your life and that's who you are whatever your specific gift is and we all have a gift that we came here to do but that's in our soul and that's the passion when we are coming from passion that is our true nature, and that is what allows us to be able to create amazing things, whether it's mm. to do Transformation Talk Radio, mm -hmm. whether it's to be a, a host on Transformation Talk Radio and talk about positive things in people's lives so you can help people make the shift and help to make them um, believe in themselves and and um, rediscover who they are. Uh, 
Joseph Brenner said um, in his book, there was a chapter called Finding Me. And he writes mm. about how to get in touch with that, how to get in touch with um, who we are. And he says, we are all God. That impersonal intelligence, whether you want to call it God, soul, or spirit, uh, it's the best and surest way you may know me is when selfless love fills your heart and there is a strong and compelling urge to help someone. That's who we are. The mm. kind the love, the joy, to bring happiness to, to a point and to point out the true way, that is the actual feel of me within you. So your mm -hmm. resume aside, all that physical stuff that we're taught to pay attention to, our five senses, our hearing, our seeing, um, and our physical bodies, uh, that aside, you know, and, and it's what's inside and it's what I created them for as avenues for expression of my real nature, which is perfect love. And that's what Joseph Brenner talks mm -hmm. about in his book called uh, The Invisible, you know, s you know, Source and Finding Me. Ah. And uh, it's so important to just get in touch with that, that, in, that source of who we are, to unplug and to de-stress and to do concentrate on joy. Yeah. Con yeah. Concentrate and do what makes you happy. Yeah. I mean, this is really one of those things that when we really think about it, we think about the divine intelligence that resides within each and every one of us. What we come to, if we're lucky enough in this lifetime, is realize how difficult we make life and we don't have to. How difficult we make it. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have someone um, hand me uh, a book by Viktor Frankl. You know, when I was really struggling, um, you know, when I was really struggling a bunch of years back and they handed me this book and I, I thought this, you know, I'm not really interested in reading. Why do I want to read anything? And I read a book and what I was really struck by is watching a man's journey in a concentration camp and having his message and his demonstration of what he did in that camp to save lives and to save his life because he had a different point of view of what he was going through while he was there. To read about that and to read about, you know, the search of meaning in life and to know that that still applies, even, Jane, in a concentration camp, certainly should be a book that we are reading today in today's world to help us, right? Absolutely. You know, to help us find our way. Um, I got a press release today that came from somebody who said, uh, the latest study shows that the old paradigm of talking about how many people are addicted to opioids, of opioid prescriptions, that now has been replaced. And the article uh, reports now that the most prescribed drug we have is not the painkillers, it's anti-anxiety yeah. medication. And that really does talk to, for us, the level of fear that our, our, our group consciousness is bringing forth, isn't it? It really does. And that's the reason that we need to get back to paying attention to who we really are and uh, mm -hmm. to unplug and to concentrate on being what, what brings us joy and what brings us happiness. Mm -hmm. And Victor Frankl's book, you know, the Holocaust survivor that you were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, when you see such, as you were pointing out, such devastation, such horrific, the worst of, that, that must've been the worst of times in humanity, being in a camp like that and coming out and writing a book the way he did, very, very powerful. And it really does speak to, as you so pointedly pointed out, what he learned from all of that and all that horrific cruelty, uh, the worst of, of how people were being treated and tortured and, and yet look at you know, that that was his true nature, love. And that was his message in the book and mm -hmm. how to be kind and how to be loving and, you know, having a happy life and and 
concentrating on your on that. I mean, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Regardless of what your environment is. Regardless, right? yeah. Regardless of what your environment is, you know. I want to ask you this question. Uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the work that you do with people, because I think it's important for us, you know, to take a moment and you know look at why this message is so important to you and what it is Jane you know that you've said yes to in the world and now you know through what you're doing is how is it you know you've been given the gift to help other people let's talk about that because not only are you a coach right but right. you know you are somebody that integrates both, you know, the intuitive nature of coaching, life mastery, angel card readings, all of the above. Um, and so the work that you do is to bring those things together and share your gifts and talents to help other people do the same. Tell us a little bit how you approach this with people. But, uh, the reason I, I really made this my mission in life is because I've been reading so many articles about, you know, how our society is really not plugged into happiness. The latest Gallup poll, I think, showed only 13% of the population in the United States was passionate about what they did. So that speaks volumes to me. And that's really where I hone in is getting you back to that getting you back to your joy, getting you back to alignment, getting you back to really what's important in your life and, and re kind of programming. I don't love that word, but, but re repositioning how you really think and perceive your life is and, and in the way that you make decisions and how you, how you view your life. It makes such a huge difference in your approach you know, yeah. uh, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer used to say, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yeah. And that is, that's it right there. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. I, I mean, but, you know, it's also to part of having somebody witness your life journey. And that's what you do when you work with people. You know, you know, we're able to witness other people in a way that allows them to show up and talk about what's going on in their lives. Because you know this and I know this, half the time when we try to talk to our friends and we try to talk to our family, basically their message is, you know what, just move on or just suck it up or yeah, that's bothering you, so what, so what? And yet uh, it's bothering us for a reason and yeah. we, we need a place to be able to share what's going on with us so we can like move beyond it. No, I don't mean like pseudo move beyond it, like where you do suck it up and then you get sick or something from that. But I mean, really let go of it emotionally, spiritually, and physically, right? And that's what right. you help people do too. It's the really the only way you live. Otherwise, you're living in the past. You're living with regret. You're living with doubt you're living with fear you're living with you know everything is in your wake and how does that move you forward it doesn't and so then what kind of life is that uh, you you know when you get to the point where you realize that 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 you are not enjoying you're waking up every day and it's not your happiest spot I mean that's when you know you need to do something to, to reconnect and so that you can have that because everybody can have that you just have to do a little work and you have to um, you have to rethink the way you think and approach life and what you put your mind on and what you pay attention to, how you speak to others even. It's 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 all of that. And once you get back in alignment, uh, you really can find your joy. You can mm -hmm. be happy again and live a different life. I mean, everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's hope and there's. There's real power in that. Yeah. A and there's real potential to take positive action in your life. And I think that's what we're talking about because, you know, uh, many of us know what it's like to be immobile, to not be able to move forward, you know, to be stuck is a word we like to use, stuck, I'm stuck. 
Um, but the bottom line is we're not really living our life's purpose. Stuffness is not a life purpose, just so you know. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and that's and who hasn't been there? We all have. We've all had challenges, uh, you know, and but you don't stay there. Mm-hmm. You can't. You know, what cho- what kind of life is that? What kind of choice is that? Mm-hmm. You know, you you are every every single one of us is entitled to joy and happiness. And we can all have that. You know, we just sometimes have to refocus, rethink. Sometimes you need a little mm-hmm. bit of help, a little bit of guidance and, and you can get there. We all can. Mm. You know, if you have the if you have the desire to be happy and to be that person that you were meant to be, mm-hmm. you can get. There. That's all you wow. need. You just need the desire to be happy. Um, well, let's talk. I know we got a couple of minutes left. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, and I wanted you to share with people, is you know to get to the place where we come to understand that this divine intelligence is available to us. I know in my life, I have not always been there, but somewhere along the line, somebody said something to me like this. They said, you know, I know you don't have faith. I know you don't believe that there is going to be a better day for you. So I want you to borrow my faith. I believe there's going to be a better day for you. I want you to borrow my faith. And that was easy for me to do. Um, part of the work that you do is, you know, you see that faith, you see that potential for people. What, what can we say to folks today that want to get to whatever the next level is in their life? What can we say to them to help them understand how to get to their highest self? They, Everybody can get to your highest self. You know, everybody has different stages that they can take and little steps that they can take to create a better life for yourself. All it takes is a little bit of discipline, a little bit of belief, and the willingness to do it, but mainly to want it. You have to want it. You have to want to be happy. Yeah. If you if you want to be happy, you are going to be happy, and you're going to do the work, and you are going to and you'll be happy. You just have to be ready for that and be ready Mm -hmm. and open to see it and want it bad enough to be it. And then Mm -hmm. you can, you know, all of us can do anything. We can have the life that we want who, and we've all had challenges. Look at people who've gone through horrific things, who have created a beautiful life for themselves. And what was the difference between those people and the ones who didn't? It was their mindset. Mm. It was being able yeah. to st- it, it walk through the fear and step into that and say, you know, I'm not going to wake up like that every day. I'm going to take responsibility for my life and I am going to do- I am going to be happy. I'm going to work at being happy, whatever that takes, because that's a life I want, period, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's within every single one of us. So it's just being aware and working at it every day. You know, it, it's a lifelong practice. It's not magic. It's lifelong practice. We have to just be aware and work at it. Oh, I love it. Jane, thank you for today. And thank you for all that you do. One last time, what's the best phone number for people to uh, contact you at? You can reach me at 203-631-4275 and um, enlightened-path.com. Awesome. Jane Matanga, everyone. I'm Dr. Pat. For more about us, go to transformationtalkradio.com. I just want to remind everybody that we've got another hour coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. Jane, thank you so much for everything. Awesome. (laughs) Uh, Benny, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. Carter, thank you for making us look so great. And to all of you, thank you for inspiring us to do what we do in the world. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in and we hope you'll join us next week as Jane helps you unlock and reclaim the magic in your life. For more information on Jane Matanga or to listen to past shows, visit her website at enlightened-path.com or growyoursoulradio.com. And don't forget to ask Jane about her amazing intuitive life mastery session. See you next time.